The Mercedes AMG One has been the Nurburgring production car lap record champion for the past three years with an incredibly quick time of just 6 minutes and 29.09 seconds. The Ford Mustang GTD has been the lap record holder for American made production cars for the past year with a lap time of 6 minutes and 52.07 seconds. But all of this is likely to change over the next couple weeks because the Corvette ZR1 is lapping the Nürburgring as we speak. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Spy Media has recently captured three different C8 Corvettes lapping the Nürburgring, one Z06, one ZR1, and one ZR1X. And the cars are there for one purpose, to smash the AMG1 and Mustang GTD production lap records. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger. We can say with absolute certainty that the ZR1 will take the American Nürburgring lap record away from the Mustang GTD. A guarantee. <laughs> An impressive car, no doubt, the Mustang GTD boasts a phenomenal 815 horsepower, 664 pound-feet of torque, and has a top speed of 202 miles per hour. But when viewed through the warped perspective of the Corvette ZR1X, those numbers are tame. With an additional 435 horsepower and a top speed estimated to be 33 miles an hour faster, the ZR1X is a huge leap forward from the Mustang. And while the GTD is without question an engineering marvel, its awkward front engine layout can't compete with the refined mid-engine chassis of the Corvette, and Chevy is going to be embarrassing Ford when it publishes the official Nürburgring lap times. Stop! You're embarrassing me! The Mustang GTD really is an incredible car, and I hate to just brush it off like this, but the performance of the ZR1X is otherworldly, and when you compare the two cars, you're no longer comparing a Mustang to a Corvette, you're comparing a Mustang to a car that's quicker than a $5 million Bugatti. So now the real question is, can the ZR1 beat the Mercedes AMG1 around the Nürburgring? Well, are you gonna go for it? If you're new to my channel, I publish original automotive content that you cannot find anywhere else. So if you're not subscribed yet, click below to subscribe and be sure to click the notification bell so you can be notified about my latest videos. While we don't have any official Nürburgring lap times for the ZR1, we do have a tremendous amount of data about the ZR1 on other racetracks. And we've also got a lot of insider information about the car. And recently, former Corvette engineer Jim Marrow went on a podcast and said the ZR1 was capable of a 6 minute and 23 second Nürburgring lap time, which is a whopping 6 seconds quicker than the AMG1. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. And when we take a close look at all of this data, it looks like the ZR1 actually has a chance of beating the AMG One's Nurburgring lap record. Is that possible? Possible. It's 100 to one shot. So let's see how the two cars stack up against each other, and let's take a close look at the data that supports the ZR1 defeating the AMG One. The AMG One weighs 3,737 pounds, is powered by an e-turbocharged V6, and has three additional electric motors, one coupled to the crankshaft and two that drive the front wheels, which generate a combined 1,049 horsepower and a reportedly immeasurable amount of torque through an all-wheel drive layout, giving the car a power-to-weight ratio of 0.28 horsepower per pound. 
It has a 0 to 60 time of 2.9 seconds and a top speed of 218 miles per hour. The ZR1X is estimated to weigh just under 4,100 pounds, is powered by a twin turbocharged V8 and one electric motor that generate a combined 1,250 horsepower and an estimated 828 pound-feet of torque through an all-wheel drive layout, giving the car a power-to-weight ratio of 0.3 horsepower per pound. It has an estimated 0 to 60 time of 1.8 seconds and an estimated top speed of 235 miles per hour. When it comes to aerodynamics, the AMG One uses a brilliantly designed active aerodynamics package that features downforce, drag, and bent elements that open when needed and generate an astonishing 1,488 pounds of downforce and then tuck away for straightaways, giving the car a smooth and slippery glass-like surface for superior high-speed acceleration and an impressive drag coefficient of 0.29. Bro was on. The ZR1X, on the other hand, features a static, high downforce aerodynamics package that generates 1,200 pounds of downforce and keeps the car planted firmly on the track, but also creates unwanted drag during high-speed acceleration. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. With the high downforce package, the ZR1 has a much less impressive drag coefficient of 0.34. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. Not a great plan. But on a twisty and technical course like the Nürburgring, horsepower and aerodynamics take a back seat to chassis, suspension, and brakes. When it comes to chassis, the Mercedes AMG One is pure race car. It features a carbon monocoque tub with an aluminum front subframe. The rear mounted gearbox and limited slip differential act as stress members of the chassis. Back it up, flip it, rub it down. Oh! The ZR1, on the other hand, is quite a bit less advanced, using an elaborate space frame chassis made of six main components and dozens of aluminum stampings, extrusions, hydroform pieces, and casings. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit sniffing blue. The AMG One suspension system features an extremely advanced five-link aluminum coilover design with transverse adjustable pushrod spring struts. Welcome to the goody room. While the ZR1 uses a much more simplified setup with magnetic ride control active damping shock absorbers. The braking system of the AMG One features six piston brake calipers up front and four piston calipers in the rear. With carbon ceramic rotors at all four wheels, the ZR1 features an incredibly powerful setup with 10 piston brake calipers up front and six piston calipers in the rear and carbon ceramic rotors at all four wheels. All right, all right, all right. So now that we've got all the specs, let's see which car looks better on paper. The AMG One is an estimated 363 pounds lighter, has a better drag coefficient, and generates 288 pounds more downforce. It also has a more advanced chassis and suspension setup, but the ZR1X has 201 more horsepower, a zero to 60 time that is an estimated 1.1 second faster, an estimated top speed that is 17 miles per hour faster, and more powerful brakes. From looking at the specs, the cars seem fairly evenly matched. The AMG One is lighter, more aerodynamic, and utilizes F1 and Le Mans technology in the chassis and suspension, which no doubt pay big dividends on the racetrack. But the ZR1, on the other hand, is a simplified powerhouse that has proven time and again 
that simplicity punches way above its weight when compared to overly complicated cutting edge technology. Amen, brother. Just look at these lap times set by GM engineers at five historical racetracks across America. At Watkins Glen, the ZR1 achieved a time of one minute and 52.7 seconds. To put that time into perspective, the next six fastest lap times after the ZR1 all belong to race cars, and the next fastest lap time set by a street legal car is seven places behind the ZR1, which is the Porsche GT3 RS. At Road Atlanta, the ZR1 achieved a time of 1 minute and 22.8 seconds, and the next fastest lap time for a street legal car on this circuit belongs to the Porsche GT2 RS, which was two seconds slower. At the Virginia International Raceway Grand Course, the ZR1's time was 2 minutes and 32.3 seconds, over one minute quicker than the previous street legal record holder, the McLaren Senna. A record was also set at the Virginia International Full Course, where the ZR1 achieved a lap time of 1 minute and 47.7 seconds, over 4 seconds faster than the previous record, which was set by a Porsche GT2 RS that was modified by Manti Racing. And at Road America, the ZR1's lap time was 2 minutes and 8.6 seconds, nearly five seconds faster than the previous street legal record set by the Porsche GT3 RS. And with all of these lap records being broken by the ZR1, the question is just how much better will the ZR1X do with its all-wheel drive and additional 186 horsepower? Plus, there's two other factors we need to take into consideration. After these lap times were set, GM introduced a significantly more powerful brake package for the ZR1, and the people who set these lap times were GM engineers who helped design the Corvette. Just think about how much quicker this car would be with a professional race car driver at the wheel. See a brother get that booty act <laughs> Leg it down, down a smack him, yak him. Cold got to be. Now let's take a look at the YouTube video heard around the world that features the famous comments made by Corvette engineer Jim Miro regarding the ZR1's potential Nürburgring lap time. Some of this is gonna be a little bit of speculation, but from what I understand, Jim's mathematical equations to getting these times are pretty, pretty freaking accurate. So even though it is not going to be 100% fact, odds are good we're gonna be very close. Let's just kick this thing off and ask the, the question that the majority of the people wanna know, and that's gonna be the C8 ZR1 R1, what do you think it's capable of on the Nürburgring? I'm looking at my data right now. Probably the um, the times I used were the C7 Grand Sport at a 727, the C7 Z06 at a 710, and the C7 ZR1 at I just I just did it at seven minutes. Um, I got delta horsepowers. The uh, the scale factors, believe it or not, horsepower to sale factor. Grand Sport to Z06 was 10.9. Z06 to ZR1 was 10.5. Grand Sport to ZR1 was 10. Seven, so it's pretty consistent. Yeah. And then if I put the C8 Z06 in a, a seven minute lap and use that scale factor, then I get a 623. But then you look at some of the other cars out there and I'm like, well, maybe, you know, that's not too far off. Realistically, I, I think that the car should easily be under 630. Um, I'm probably going to get in a lot of trouble for saying that, but you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's speculation. Sure. But with, with some background, right. I think a 630 is doable. It's easy to sit here in my living room and do that, but <laughs> right. I, 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 if, if I was still gainfully employed and one of the guys trying to cut this lap, I'd say the same thing. If Taj were to ask me, what do you think? He, and he did. When I, uh, Every time we went, what do you think it'll do? And I told him, and um, if he asked me what it would do, I, I would say 630. So Jim Miro somewhat sheepishly predicts a Nürburgring lap time of 6 minutes and 23 seconds but very confidently gives us a lap time of six minutes and 30 seconds. But that's all right, we'll worry about that later. Now, of course, all of this is speculation, 
but I do believe that if GM is maintaining the ZR1 with an advanced crew that will assure the car is performing its very best. About the car, is there anything I need to know? Does it stall? Does it smoke? Does it make a lot of noise? Is there gas in it? Anything. And they use the best street legal tires they can get their hands on. And most importantly, the car is being driven by an extremely talented professional race car driver who is highly familiar with the Nürburgring. The ZR1 has a legitimate shot of breaking the AMG One's Nürburgring lap record. And this leads us to the final question. Which car will score a better lap time? The ZR1 or the ZR1X? The ZR1 is significantly lighter, but the ZR1X is more powerful and all-wheel drive. Luckily, Chevy is running both cars, so in a matter of weeks, we'll know for sure. And I can't wait to see the results. Thanks for watching and for more automotive content that you cannot find anywhere else, click here to subscribe. Right here, click this thing.